A reading tonight from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1. There was a certain man of Ramathiam Zophim of the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Zuf, an an Ephrathite. He had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Now this man used to go up year by year from his city to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh, where the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were priests of the Lord. On the day when Elkanah was sacrificed, when, on the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion, because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival used to provoke her grievously to irritate her, because the Lord had closed her womb. And so it went on year by year. As often as she went up to the house of the Lord, She used to provoke her. Therefore Hannah wept, and she would not eat. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? And why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh, Hannah rose. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed, and she prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was speaking in her heart, only her lips moved, and her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli took her to be a drunken woman. And Eli said to her, How long will you go on being drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered, No, my lord, I am a woman troubled in spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink. But I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for all along I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation. Then Eli answered, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition that you have made to him. And she said, Let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went her way and ate. And her face was no longer sad. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. And in due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Samuel. For she said, I have asked for him from the Lord. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. Forgotten. Forgotten and empty, barren. Forgotten and empty and barren and provoked. Irritated every year, all the time, irritated. This was Hannah, forgotten, empty, barren, provoked, and irritated. She was an object of contempt and ridicule. She was the laughing stock of the whole house. Hannah was forgotten. She was barren, she was weeping, she was distressed. Her husband did his best, didn't he? Hannah, why do you weep? Hannah, here, have extra portions from the Lord's house. Hannah, why do you weep? Why are you downcast? Why won't you eat? Am I not more to you than ten sons? He did his best, but there are some things that even a good husband can't cure. 
He gave her a double portion. He loved her. He tried to speak tenderly to her, but Hannah was forgotten. Elkanah couldn't comfort her. He couldn't fill her. He couldn't deliver her, not from the shame that she felt, not from being forgotten. And so she did what faithful Christians, whether in the Old Testament or in the New, should always do when they feel forgotten. She went into the Lord's house and prayed to the Lord. She directed her complaints. She directed her afflictions. She directed her sorrows and her tears and her troubles to the Lord. Surely if anyone can remember the forgotten, it's the Lord. Surely if anyone will remember Hannah, she must have figured, it is the one whose remembrance really counts. But what did Hannah find in the house of the Lord? Will her prayers be heard? Will she be remembered in the Lord's house? Well, not if the priest is any indication. Look at how the priest treats her. It's almost worse than the way that her rival, Penina, treated her. What are you, some kind of drunken woman? Put your wine away and stop with all this. Get out of here, you drunk woman. Eli's spiritual blindness gives us an indication, doesn't it, that Israel as a whole has big problems at this time. If the high priest doesn't recognize a woman who is troubled and praying, well then, where is anyone with hope? Here's this pious woman doing the very thing that the tabernacle is meant to facilitate, coming to the Lord. And here's the high priest, the great mediator and intercessor for the people. He sees her praying and he thinks she's a drunk. Things aren't good in Israel, do you see? Woman, how long are you going to go on like this? Put away your wine. Hannah was forgotten. She was empty. She was ridiculed. And now, even worse, she's treated with scorn by the priest himself. On top of it all, she's thought to be a drunk in the very place that she should have found understanding. Eli's blindness shows us, doesn't it, that Hannah's problems are a microcosm of a bigger problem. Hannah's problems are a microcosm of the problems of all Israel at that time. For Hannah is forgotten and barren and scorned. And so on a macro level, Israel must have been experiencing the same things. I don't want to belabor this point, but I think it's worth pointing out because this is a story that we don't know that much about, do we? I don't think that, um, I know that I've never preached on the story of Hannah and Samuel, and I wonder if any of you have ever heard a sermon on this. So let me give you a little bit of an insight into the background, into the historical context. You heard how Eli was kind of a useless priest. He couldn't recognize true prayer when it was right in front of him. But if we were to keep reading in the book of Samuel, we would find that Eli's blindness was not limited to him. His sons, who were mentioned, Hophni and Phinehas, were not just as blind as Eli, they were actually even worse. They were stealing from the Lord's sacrifices and they were sleeping with prostitutes. This wasn't just your run-of-the-mill kind of bad priests. This was like really bad priests. This was like evil, wickedness, in the places where there should only be holiness and righteousness. Here's the great tragedy of the situation, too. You know how it goes. With the shepherds, so it goes with the sheep. And if the priests are this way, if the priests can't recognize true and pious prayer when it's right in front of them, in the tabernacle of all places, well then you can, you can bet that the rest of Israel wasn't really spiritually aware at that time. See, that's how spiritual blindness works. It doesn't stay relegated to one person, and especially if the leaders of the people are the blind ones, it spreads. It's like gangrene. It spreads, and it infects everyone. So I don't think it's a stretch for us to say that if this is how Eli views this faithful woman, Hannah, as a drunk, then it's highly likely that the rest of Israel would have regarded her in the same way. Faithful Hannah was forgotten, and so was faithful Israel, too. Forgotten and empty and ridiculed by those who should have helped. What's going on with Hannah is also going on in the nation as a whole. Forgotten, barren, empty. 
And in this, is not Hannah a perfect Advent figure for us? Or are we so different? Are faithful Christians so different now? Are we held up as objects of praise in the eyes of the world? Or are we looked at as objects of ridicule? If you go into the house of the Lord and there you pour out your laments, there you pour out your afflictions and your tears, will people look at you and say, that's the right thing to do? Or will they look at you and say, why are you wasting your time like that? If you look to the Lord and you pray to him for help, if you want to be remembered by him, will you be honored by people all around you? Or will you be seen as somehow foolish and backwards, somehow old-fashioned and outdated? Does the faithful church experience huge growth and a bright future? Or do we feel much like Hannah, forgotten and barren? Hannah was forgotten. She was barren. But Hannah did what everyone who feels forgotten and forsaken ought to do. And it is what we do in our Advent season every year, and especially this year. We turn to the Lord with all our hearts and all our souls and all our minds, and we pour out our afflictions. We pour out our anxieties. We pour out our fears, and we wait. We wait. Hannah was ridiculed by this Penina woman. Hannah was ridiculed and treated poorly by the priest, but Hannah didn't give up, did she? Hannah waited for the Lord. Hannah was forgotten and barren, but she turned to the Lord. She bore the reproaches of the world around her. She bore the reproaches of the people within her own house, and she bore her cross, we could say, with patience and with grace. And Hannah was remembered. Hannah was remembered, and she was heard, and she was filled. A son of remembrance. That's what we see tonight in the womb of Hannah. As we spend time with these pregnant women from Scripture in this season of Advent, we see that the Lord remembers those who look to him, and he gives precisely what Hannah needs, a son of remembrance. This is what we see in micro, in Hannah's pregnancy. The Lord hears, and that's exactly what the name Samuel means. The name Samuel has this wonderful double meaning. It means both, I asked of the Lord, and the Lord hears. And so in this child, in this pregnant woman, Hannah, we see a barren woman who has been filled. We see a forgotten woman who the Lord remembers. And we see the son of remembrance, Samuel a token of God's greater remembrance. For what is true about Hannah in micro is also true about Israel and you, you Christian church, in macro. You are not forgotten. Your prayers are not in one ear and out the other with the Lord. Your prayers are not disregarded by him. He doesn't look on you pouring out your vexations and your afflictions and say, what are these drunk people doing? But he hears the prayers of his faithful. In fact... He delights in your prayers. Let my prayer ascend before you, O Lord, as incense. Now, some people don't like the smell of incense. Maybe you're one of those people. But the whole point of incense in the Old Testament and in the church throughout the ages has been that it is a sweet smell. And the picture that is given to us in incense is of our prayers ascending before the Lord, not as bitter complaints that are sour in his nose, but as a sweet-smelling sacrifice that he loves to take in and he loves to hear. You are not forgotten. None of us are forgotten. Not just, and we don't just have the token of Samuel, but we have a greater son of remembrance, our Lord Jesus Christ. For in the pregnancy of Mary, in the birth of the child at Bethlehem, we see that God does not just answer our prayers in micro. He doesn't just take away one woman's grief but he fulfills all of his promises. And in our Lord Jesus Christ, we have this promise written large. God is with us. Emmanuel, God with us. A son of remembrance. Does that mean all our afflictions are gone? Does that mean all our crosses melt away? Does that mean we never feel the pain, the pain and reproaches that Hannah felt? Certainly not. We feel those things. We feel them all the time. But we have this assurance, we have this certainty, we have this faith 
that as God filled Hannah's womb and as he filled Mary's womb, so he will continue to fill his church with his remembrance. And the remembrance of the Lord is what really counts. Who knows if you'll be remembered by the world around you? Who knows and who cares? For if you are remembered by the Lord, then you truly are a Hannah. You know what Hannah means? We don't have any Hannahs in the congregation tonight. It means favored one. To be favored by the Lord, to be remembered by him, to be given his grace, that is what matters. That is what counts. So be like Hannah. Bear your reproaches, bear your afflictions with patience and grace. Turn to the Lord in prayer and see how he remembers those who turn to him. To Christ be the glory now and always. Amen.